guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Mimi Chamutai Sikilai. In this channel, we do talk about making money, saving money, investing money, finances, personal development, mindset, anything positive and just a life of abundance. And if that's you and you do want to listen to that kind of content, then please do join the party by subscribing to this channel and give us a thumbs up for the content that we're giving out. In today's video, we will be doing Mimi Talks Wealth. And under wealth, we will be talking about the eight different streams of income that somebody could have. So there's a verse in the Bible that talks about having multiple streams of income. I will plug it in here. And because of that, actually it talks about seven streams of income. And I'll talk about the different streams of income that somebody could actually have. Let's jump right into the video as to all the other streams of income that somebody could have. So of course, number one would be the earned income. So earned income pretty much means you are working somewhere and you are being paid a salary. For example, if you're a lawyer, you work Monday to Friday, the beginning of the month to the end of the month, and you are offering services or you are offering your time and your labor to that company then you will earn a reward for that and that will be known as your earned income so you get it from working a job um, which is quite uh, mainstream that's a lot of us are actually employed a lot of us went to school and aspired to be employed and there's nothing wrong with that i feel like in the recent past there's a a hype as to you don't need to be employed or it's, it's so bad being employed there's nothing wrong with being employed if there's some people who actually cannot work on or cannot run their own businesses, they cannot be entrepreneurs. And remember, there's a difference between entrepreneurship and self-employment because entrepreneurship is where you're the boss and you have time freedom and self-employment is where you are actually the boss, but you still don't have that time freedom. You are the product itself. So if, for example, you are self-employed and you teach, you don't have time freedom because for you to actually open shop, you actually have to be there standing teaching. So you don't have time freedom like an entrepreneur who could have probably invested in a wood company or like a, yeah, a factory and the factory runs over and above whether he's there or not because he has systems and structures and people who work on his behalf and he still earns money. So yes, that's number one, which is the earned income. Number two would be the profits income. And um, profits income is purely prof um, an income that you make from buying and selling. So for example, you open a boutique on Instagram and you buy tops from Gikomba. Actually, when I was 19, I did earn profits income because I used to go to Gikomba. I buy tops from this guy called Jose. They were 10 shillings each. So I'd buy these tops, wash them, come back home, wash them, iron them, put them in Starsoft, and then sell them for like 100 bob or 50 bob. So that's earned income. I, I know that's profit income because I was buying something at 10 shillings and sen, selling it at 50 shillings, adding value to it, selling it at 50 shillings or 100 shillings and making profits as the income. So that's, that's the difference between earned income and profits income. Profits income is purely from buying and selling things. So you buy a phone or an elect or electricals, have a shop, stock, stock the shop, you've bought them and you sell them. The profits you make in between will be the profits income. The other one would be interest income. Um, interest income is if you are lending money to people and they are paying an interest to you. So if you're like a Shylock or you're somebody who lends people money and they do pay it back with an interest on top, so you make your money from that interest that comes on top of it. So they are actually people who make a living from that. They give you money and they expect you to return with an interest. Same thing like chamas. If you do table banking, you are in a chama, you are given money and you expect to return it with interest. So the, the chama is only making money or making profits because of the interest that that money that was borrowed is accruing. So that's another stream of income you could want to venture in. Um, Another one would be capital income. Capital income purely means you do have an asset and your asset has gained value. So as the asset gains value, you start earning capital income. For example, if you have an asset like land and you're speculating on the value of that land going up, so you bought it for a million shillings or 500,000 shillings, and now after three years, after four years, the value has gone up and doubled, that would be capital income. So there are some people who invest or make that stream of income 
their stream of income. Purely having an asset and the value of that asset going up, as long as the asset goes up in value, then of course you earn capital income. The other one would be dividend income, which I'm quite passionate about because I work for an investment bank. And I feel like in my generation, it's very rare for people to actually invest in stock and shares. In Kenya, we call them shares, which I think is um, very important. Maybe they don't do that because they feel like it's such little profit or it's, it's not sustainable. For shares, I normally advise you, or for stock, I normally advise you to get as much stock as possible in a good company. So if you get the red flags on a company, for example, they're corrupt, or for example, they're offering horrible services. Of course, the value of that company, we assume, should go down. So of course, you should start selling the stock or the shares you have in that company. But also, if you have stock or shares in a company, for example, if it's Safaricom, and you have thousands of their shares, and you can see they're offering amazing products. As time goes by, they keep upgrading. They keep offering things that are usable to customers. They're convenient, they're fast, they're efficient, they're customer friendly, they, they just stick everything, then of course you should invest in having more shares with such a sustainable company. Because in the long run, we do assume that stock is long term. So in, in the long run, you value of the stock will go up. So in case you bought Safaricom shares at 30 shillings, probably 10, 15 years from now, we assume it would be 40 shillings, and you have thousands of those shares. So of course it's 10 times the thousands that you have and you do earn value like that, but that's not what dividend income actually means. Dividend income means every single year, apart from you waiting for those 10 to 15 years to come, every single year that company does pay off dividends, like a token back to the shareholders for having shares in that company. So dividend income is also important. So for example, if they're giving out two shillings as dividend for that year, so you're two shillings multiplied by the thousands of shares you have. And of course, not you're, you're not only having shares in Safaricom also, only you're having shares in EABL, you're having shares in Jubilee Insurance, you're having shares with um, Captura T. So it does add up when you have all this dividend income um, accrued. And then the other one would be rental income, which I'm quite passionate about. Last year on my vision board, I did want to own a house in London. Um, unfortunately, that didn't happen, or it didn't happen then. It could still happen. I still want to be a landlady in London. I don't know why London, pretty much because I've lived in that town, or I've spent quite some time there, and I love, love, love that town. But I did manage to become a landlady somewhere in Kenya, and um, I now earn rental income. And rental income is still long term from where I'm seated. It's more or less like um, earning from the houses that you own so every single month you would people would be living in your house and they would be paying you rent then you earn income from there so i don't know much about the rental space in kenya i'm seated from a point where it's quite big to me because i do actually feel like i do need to go for a property management class to understand is the supply enough in kenya or it's too much supply and no demand i'll be honest with you i have no idea where the direction as to where the rental space especially in nairobi is going towards but yes from where i have built my houses in a different town out of nairobi um rent there is quite low but fully occupied so i did like affordable housing so i still feel like i need to understand where are we in the real estate market in Kenya right now. Um, then the other one would be your royalty income. Royalty income, royalty income, and this I did get from a friend of mine. He's a genius, he's so smart. So all he does is come up with beautiful ideas and then he sells his ideas to people and he earns a royalty for that. So he'd come up with an idea that the transport system, for example, in Kenya needs this and this structures input or for example, the person who came up with M-Pesa, I'm sure it was an idea that he did sell to somebody and somebody did pay him royalty for that idea. So all the ideas you do have in your mind, guys, please don't um, just sit on them. You should work towards monetizing those ideas purely because ideas can actually come into reality. Um, as a man thinketh, so is he. So whatever you think and put in your mind and creatively come up with, you can put that into a system of sell that idea to somebody who actually has the money to, or like an angel investor who 
can invest in that idea and get it running. So you will earn royalty income. So don't feel like, oh, I have so many ideas, but I can't monetize it. Yes, you can monetize your idea. You just need to be seated with the right people, share your ideas with the right people, don't talk to the wrong people, and also, of course, mindset. If you do have a limited mindset, then of course, you will feel like you are less of the idea or you don't your idea cannot be monetized but if you do have a mindset of abundance then definitely or a positive mindset then definitely you will find a way of monetizing that idea um, and of course an idea is not an idea if it doesn't have a problem and a solution so you also have to have the problem as to what you feel like the problem is and the solution to that problem and somebody would buy in and pay you royalties finally we do have residual income and a lot of people do ask me what is residual income so do you hear guys saying I sleep and wake up and I earn money in my sleep? So that is what residual income pretty much means in layman language. For me, I would explain it simply as um, you did something three, four months. You did it January, February, March, and you're still earning in December from the things that you did in January, February, March. So it, residual is it just keeps it keeps you keep getting paid for work that you did long time ago so residual income is very very important especially if you're trying to grow generational wealth it's pretty much income that you put in work now and get it and get paid for it now and also later and i know this is usually especially if you are doing like affiliate marketing so you market things now and people get to sell buying now you earn from the buys now and as time goes by people still keep buying and buying and buying if they keep buying up until that December, then of course you will still keep getting paid up until that December for the affiliate marketing that you did in January, February, and March. So I hope you understood what residual income is. I do pray and hope that this video did um, make somebody understand I belong to this lane, or even, I feel like Kenyans are quite ambitious, or even have all of them as streams of income. So you can say, I want to do this, that will give me profit income. I want to do this, that will give me earned income. I want to do this, that will give me residual income. I mean, it's a life of abundance. There's nothing stopping you from having all the streams of income because you never know which direction the wind will blow. And you never know if this one is not giving money today. If your rental spaces are empty today, then at least you have royalties you're still earning or at least you have dividends that you're still collecting so i hope this video did guide you on how to build wealth step by step and um see you guys on the next video if you are not subscribed to this channel please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel it does support this channel and share this video with anybody you think will get value from this video see you guys on the next video goodbye